good afternoon and welcome to this segment of Voices from Our Schools. I'm Kimberly Stender from the Office of the Superintendent and I'm joined today by two very special guests. We have Dan Frege, who is our AmeriCorps volunteer over at Amherst Regional Middle School and our Valor Scholar tutor, Noelle Newell, who is from Amherst College. So I welcome you both to this program. And I just want to begin by letting our viewers know that this is a follow-up program that um, um, from what, one that we did back in September, where we had um, Mike Hayes, who's a principal of Amherst Regional Middle School, as well as Karen Lee Miller from the Center for Community Engagement at Amherst College, and I believe uh, Joel Singley was on the show as well. And they first showcased the Vela Scholar Program, which has been so successful at the middle school. So we're very fortunate that you took time out of your day to come and join us here and explain to our viewers um, about Vela and um, uh, some experiences that you've had and where you see the program going in the future. Thanks for having us. You're yeah, welcome. You. You're welcome. So Dan, why don't we start with you? Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be um, at Amherst Regional Middle School and in the Vela program? So I grew up in Worcester, Massachusetts, um, and I moved here to go to Amherst College. Um, after four years at Amherst College, I um, was interested in staying in the area, and I've always been sort of interested in education. Of course, since I went to Amherst College, I didn't have an education degree or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So um, my options for being in the classroom were fairly limited. Um, but I heard about this program through the Center for Community Engagement, and it's actually kind of a strange case of someone finding AmeriCorps through a specific AmeriCorps site as opposed to the uh, other way around. Um, and so I ended up um, applying to AmeriCorps specifically in the hopes of getting uh, the position at um, the middle school site mm -hmm. and um, got it. So got to spend another year here and uh, very happy about that. Great, and I've heard great things about you from everyone involved in the program. So we're very fortunate to have had you um, at the helm of the program for the past year. So thank you so much. Thank you. Now, Noelle, you're a student at Amherst College. You're yep. a sophomore. So why don't you tell uh, our viewers a little bit about how you came to Amherst College and what attracted you to getting involved in Vela? Um, well, I first came to Amherst College two years ago. I'm a sophomore now. Um, for my orientation trip, I joined, um, it's called the CIA trip, the Community Engagement Orientation Trip. Um, I actually did with Dan. Um, and um, part of that was Part of that trip, um, it emphasized um, getting involved with community engagement again. Um, so I just wanted to keep keep up with community engagement. So I heard about this program and I thought I'd join it, and I, I really enjoyed it ever since. So did you join as a, a first year student at Amherst yes, College? Yes, I joined, yeah. And you got right into Vela. Right. Yeah. Okay. Did you do a lot of volunteer work in high school or leading up to your time here at Amherst College? Um, I did a little bit of volunteer work, um, not too much though. I mm -hmm. was really busy with schoolwork and it wasn't mm -hmm. really that readily available to me like it is at Amherst. So right. yeah, the CCA is great in that it offers a lot of opportunities. Absolutely. And they're expanding, seems like every few months if there's a new program or they're building on something that's already um, very successful. So we're very grateful for them to reaching out to the Amherst Public Schools and having this strong partnership. So and I think glad. everyone really enjoys being a part of the community too, mm -hmm. giving back and not just staying in our Amherst College bubble. Right. Yeah. Got to get out of those bubbles, right, Noelle? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, let's um, talk about um, after school programs at the middle school. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about the, some of the other clubs and activities that are offered and then we could talk more about Vela. Sure. Yeah. So. Um, part of my position is coordinating sort of the, at least the very beginning stages of club sign up and things mm -hmm. like that. And so we have 19 or 20 clubs, I think, running right mm -hmm. now at ARMS. And um, uh, they run once or twice a week, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, because those are the days we have late bus. And we have the right. free late bus for all the students to, to get home after their clubs. Um, all of the clubs, I think, provide something for, for some students, but there's a few that I'd sort of like to highlight, especially given um, their prominence this year. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, um, the yearbook club is always really popular, and uh, Tamara Matozik does a great job of sort of organizing all the students in that. Um, there are a couple clubs this year that needed to sort of split into two different sections because they were so popular, 
Um, so the Drama Club, which Margarita mm -hmm. Bonifaz runs, is really popular. They have two different uh, sections that run uh, every other Tuesday. And then the Cooking Club um, has three different sections, and that's a new club this year that Amber Ryan, who's one of the really great paraprofessionals at the middle school, runs. Um, I, uh, the, the other club that I sort of wanted to talk a little bit about is STEM Rays, which mm -hmm. is a club yes. that uh, Jennifer Wellborn runs, who's one of the science teachers at the middle school. She does an amazing job, and some of the projects, uh, the, it's a science and technology um, engineering research program, um, and so um, some of the projects that these students come up with are really amazing, things that, um, that I, as a, as a person who uh, science is um, kind of like uh, oil and water with me, um, uh, can't even really quite totally grasp some of this work that 7th and 8th graders are doing for that club, so I think that's a really special thing. Um, yeah, and then of course my special thing is is the Vail Scholars Program, which runs every day after after school uh, that there's a late bus, so Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, or uh, and Thursdays. And Wednesdays. Can you give us a brief overview of Vela and um, you know who is involved in this program, what types of kids you get, mm -hmm. and what the typical afternoon looks like? So uh, the Vail program um, is for any student at the middle school. Um, I think oftentimes it's, it's sort of uh, seen as a remedial program. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see it that way at all. Uh, there are students in the Vail program that are getting straight A's, and there are students in the Vail program that are struggling in some of their classes, mm -hmm. um, or many of their classes. and. Um, the way that Vela works is that we have instructors come in from Amherst College and teams tutors from the UMass uh, teams class right. come in every day and um, some of our paraprofessionals work with us every day and um, we have 7th and 8th graders come in right after school. Um, they work on a specialized curriculum for 15 or 20 minutes which is math based, um, written by a retired math teacher from the middle school, Kathy Convoy. And then after that, um, they work on their homework for the rest of the time. And they get a lot of attention from the tutors and their instructors. And um, I think that almost every student can benefit from this. Mm -hmm. And so, Nicole, where do you fit into Noelle. all this? Oh, Noelle, I'm sorry. <laughs> Noelle, where okay. do you fit into all this? Um, I'm one of the tutors, or the instructors, that come once a week. Mm -hmm. um, I work kind of one-on-one, -on -one depending on how many students are there that day. Sometimes I like group of three or four. Um, we'll go through the veil of work that we have in the curriculum for them. Mm -hmm. And then once they've done a considerable amount of that, a worksheet or two, um, we'll move on to their homework, just looking at it, getting a better understanding of, of what they do. And do you tend to work one-on-one -on -one with each student, or do you work in small groups? Well, it depends on how many students are that, uh, there that day and how many um, tutors are, are there or instructors there are also. I see. Um, I've worked one-on-one -on -one with students, but then I've also worked in groups of three or four students. And do you tend to get the same student each time you help at Vela? Um, well, in the past semester, sometimes I'll, I'll be kept with the same student just so because we you know, have a kind of relationship mm -hmm. and we, we know how each other works, we know how to like read each other. Um, but this this past semester, it's been, you know, we're still getting into it a bit. Um, so I've been changing every now and then, but mm -hmm. yeah. And that consistency must be very nice for both you mm -hmm. and the middle school students. Yeah, um, some of the girls that I've worked with, I became really close with, I really, lo really love them. We actually figured out that we have the same birthday, so we're trying to throw birthday parties for ourselves, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes it really fun. Yeah, they're great. So I know, Vela, um, you do a lot of different, um, you, you cover a broad curriculum, but math is really the paramount of the program. Mm -hmm. And can you tell me a little bit about why that's yeah. so important, especially Absolutely. in our in our district. Absolutely, um, I think for 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 our district and for our age students, I think there are sort of I, I see it as as there are three reasons why um, the math focus is especially important. First of all, is just a sort of program specific reason: the fact that we have this incredible resource in Kathy Convoy, mm -hmm. who was a great math teacher for thirty years in this district, and and now is able to work with us part-time, writing this curriculum and working with students one-on-one, -on -one, that is, is a kind of resource that doesn't always come around, mm -hmm. and we're really lucky to have her. Uh, second reason is, 
I think that there are a lot of resources for um, ELA mm -hmm. in the school. And yes. although I'd like to integrate a lot of that work mm -hmm. into, into Vela too, I think that it's important to start with math because mm -hmm. I think that, you know, we have um, teachers like Wilma Ortiz and people like that in the middle school that do such a great job with, with English, English language learning mm -hmm. and, and filling in the gaps for that um, that I think um, maybe maybe focusing on the math is 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 uh, or can be a more important thing to start with, mm -hmm. and the third reason is um, students are getting to a point where um, math is going to start building on itself in a very very significant way. Um, you can, if you miss. Um, something about the book that you're reading in your English class. You can move on to the next book you're reading in your English class and you mm -hmm. haven't necessarily sort of, sort of um, gotten yourself into trouble for a long period of time. If you miss out on um, understanding fractions conceptually, it becomes inc increasingly difficult as you move to the next step. You know, they take Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 and then you know, they take Geometry, they take Pre-Calculus, Calculus, right, as they're going to start moving into high school. Mm -hmm. and the, the, the problem is that if there's a conceptual gap somewhere in their past, and it doesn't have to be because of, of any sort of um, uh, remedial issue with the students, sometimes it's just because they got chicken pox the wrong week, or because they moved school districts, and the school district that they moved into already taught something that they never learned in their old school district. Mm -hmm. um, but there are students that sometimes are missing a piece, and when you, when, and, and with this sort of snowball effect, that can really start to affect their performance in later math classes. So a lot of the math work is based on sort of um, filling in some of these gaps that might be there so that they can mm -hmm. progress. Mm -hmm. And so then how would you measure that success? Or, or you know, does Vail have something in place? Mm -hmm. So it's different with different students. Mm -hmm. um, we, we start by, by giving each student a sort of pretest as they come in. And the pretest covers all the different concepts that we have uh, curriculum on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, if a student does really well in in one conceptual area, we're not going to hammer them with work. The point is not to give the students more work. Um, the students have homework from their teachers. Their teachers do a very good job and make sure that they always are sort of moving along in their classes. Mm -hmm. So the students definitely have enough work. So if 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 the work's unnecessary uh, unnecessary, we won't give it to them. So if they um, so, so we have them take this pretest, mm -hmm. and based on that assessment, we can sort of see the areas that they might need help with, and we have curriculum that can follow along. And if they start to understand a concept, if they understand if they understand a concept completely, we'll move on to the next one until they're finished with our curriculum work. And and like I said, we have no desire to keep them going with stuff that they don't need. Okay, great. Yeah. Now, off camera, Noel, you mentioned that you were a math classics. Yeah, math and classics, Major. yeah. So being so strong in math, did you find that um, these tutorial sessions that were um, um, presented to the Vela Scholar Tutors back in September were helpful to you? Do they build upon your current knowledge or do they give you a new insight um, in terms of teaching and presenting material in a certain way to 7th and 8th graders? Yeah, um, they were really helpful because for me, at least, learning math is completely different than teaching it to somebody else, mm -hmm. um, because not all the students understand, and myself included, not all students understand math concepts the same way. Mm -hmm. So what was really helpful um, that Kathy did was explain to us different ways to teach the same concepts. Like if they don't understand it one way, mm -hmm. we'll get another approach to it. Um, and I thought that was really helpful. So those different pathways, different kids mm -hmm. learn differently. Exactly. You know, well, um, but it's very helpful to have those strategies in place. Yeah. Because when you're sitting there with a the student and you might reach a roadblock, perhaps you can go to a different strategy or technique to get the concept across to them in a successful way. Exactly. And you, I didn't necessarily know all the different ways to teach, I mean, obviously I didn't know all the different ways to teach the students. So that was really helpful that Kathy was there. Mm -hmm. she was a, she's a great resource for the mm -hmm. program. So aside from math, what else would you, um, work on with students during the time? Um, so after we work on the Vela curriculum that we have, um, they'll bring out their homework and it can be anything from um, typing up a paper or working on a history mm -hmm. project. Um, I've helped um, students write a, science, write a science report up. 
um, make a poster. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes when we've done a lot of work, we just kind of relax for a little bit, unwind, and mm -hmm. just, just chat. So it's And that's really so great. important. Yeah. You know, like, I think your day is busy. You yeah. start your day pre-dawn on, on the <laughs> river doing crew. And Occasionally, Our yeah. students are up very early, too, and mm -hmm. it's, you know, hit the, hit the ground running. So it's nice to spend time, kind of decompress, maybe learn a little bit about what you do at Amherst College and, you know, um, inform these kids that, you know, college is definitely something that they should think about on their horizon. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, thanks for encouraging. Yeah, I think that for me that's one of the sort of essential features that makes me care a lot about the, the Vail Scholars Program, mm -hmm. just because um, when I was a student at Amherst, we talked a lot about um, how there could be distance between Amherst College community and Amherst Town community. Yes. And I think that some of that distance is, is reflected um, in, in, in sort of an attitude that they, these, are, these are two different worlds and that one of these worlds is not necessarily attainable for, for, people, for people in the other. So I think that one of the great things about this program is not only are our, our, our students from Amherst College coming to be in the community and work in the community and become real true members of the community, but also that um, the students at the middle school start seeing themselves as not separate entities from the students at Amherst College. Um, I think that sometimes uh, even the sort of geographic closeness of Amherst can can make it seem even more unattainable because it's so it can it can be so different and yet so close. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that for a lot of our students, uh, the benefit that I most see is not necessarily in the academic component of it, but in the component of it of starting to gain a relationship with some of mm -hmm. our instructors like Noel. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. And you know, um, I'm sure if you're downtown Amherst and walking around getting a slice of pizza at Antonio's or in CVS, you might see some of your students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they feel very comfortable going up to you and, and greeting you and talking to you, maybe meeting you know their mom or dad or uh, some you know part of their family, really makes um, this program even more special. Um, you know, we're really into forging relationships and mentorships, so I think that speaks volumes right there. And the, the students feel it too. I think that um, when, when Amherst was on their, their uh, winter break, which is, is several weeks longer. It was, it was long. It was <laughs> several <laughs> weeks longer than the winter break that we have. Uh, the students um, got quickly tired of myself and Mr. Singley and, uh, and um, started asking, when, when is Noel coming back? And, mm -hmm. and then, and, and, it, and it sort of spreads, right? You know, a, another student says, who's Noel? And then, and one of Noel's, uh, one of Noel's students said, oh, she's the coolest person <laughs> ever. Oh, oh so, wow. <laughs> so that's the kind of thing Very that generous. I think, that's the kind of relationship that, that um, gets built with, with a lot of the students. And, mm -hmm. and students start coming back when they see their favorite tutors there. Right. Um, oh, Mr. Safan's here today. I'm going to go to Vela, right? Mm -hmm. And things like that happen. Right. The, the good news spreads quickly, which leads me into the Vela Summer Program. Mm -hmm. And this is, is it brand new this year? We did a little bit last year. Last year there was mm -hmm. a Vela Summer Program too. Right. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and so this year we're, we're keeping, it, keeping it up, keep going strong. I think it was a big success last year, so we're excited about doing it again. And how many uh, students are you expecting to enroll in the Vela Summer Program? So last year there were 80. We're expecting 80 again. Okay. Um, and we have four teachers mm -hmm. um, from the middle school who work at it. We're not sure who those teachers are going to be yet this year. But last year, uh, um, Jen Oliver and, and Jonathan Newman mm -hmm. and Michael Lawrence Riddell all worked the, at, the, at, the, at the summer program. And the great thing about that is we can divide the students into, into classrooms and they can sort of do some uh, academic work. And the academic work is project-based, so mm -hmm. it's not as if they're just gonna be sitting there and sort of memorizing mm -hmm. uh, their, their times tables over again. It's not, it's, not, um, it's not like a remedial summer school. This is a program for everybody. Mm -hmm. So we want, them, we want them to do skills work, and there's going to be a component of skills work, for, especially for students that may wanna sort of you know, bump up to the next level, bump mm -hmm. up and do that honors work uh, in math or something like that. But 
but a lot of it is project-based and a lot of it is going to be sort of continual throughout the entire program. And how many Vela Scholar interns and volunteers are you expecting this summer? Yep, so we'll have eight uh, uh, Amherst College students interning at the program, and we're very lucky that Noel is going to be one of them this year. Uh, we had eight, uh, nine last year, um, um, but given the sort of uh, some of the differences in the program, we're going to be we're going to be going forward with eight this year, and it's mm -hmm. going to be it's going to be wonderful. Great. Yeah. So, ten Amherst Middle School students per. Mm -hmm. Vela volunteers. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and so um, the program this year is, is three weeks long, from July seventh through okay. through July 29th. Okay. Um, and all the um, Amherst College interns will be coming a week in advance to do uh, a training uh, session for for a week um, before that. And we're lucky that they get to live for free at Amherst College mm -hmm. and get a stipend from Amherst College, which just really allows us to. To, to run this program and to and to do something really uh, special with it, something exceptional with it. I don't think that it's something that a lot of school districts have. No, we're very fortunate. <laughs> again, once again, Amherst College and Center for Community Engagement, you know, visualized this and really made it happen. And for um, we're very fortunate to have students like yourself involved in the program. So last summer, were you involved in this at all, Noel? I wasn't involved in this um, last summer, but I'm really excited to do it this summer. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be more of what I do um, over the school year. It's just going to be working with the curriculum, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's going to be different because it's a whole day. Um, there are going to be a lot more enrichment programs and mm -hmm. field trips, and I'm very excited for that. So what are you planning for our students? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> we don't want to give anything away. <laughs> Can't divulge the state secrets. Right. <laughs> so last year, did you do any field trips or, you know, um, did you go over to campus in the afternoon? How was it mm -hmm. set up? Yeah, last year there was um, a lot of different stuff that the interns did. Mm -hmm. The way they sort of ended up setting up is they, they ended up sort of organizing different clubs for the students. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll just sort of run through the day, a day okay. in the program. Um, students will, will, will come in at uh, 8 o'clock and um, I, I should mention, I, I actually should emphasize that this program is free yes. um, for any uh, student that's going to be in 7th grade or 8th grade uh, in Amherst uh, region mm -hmm. um, uh, next year. And uh, transportation is provided mm -hmm. uh, and food is provided. So this program is entirely free. Is that breakfast and lunch? Uh, I, I think it's just lunch. Lunch, okay. But um, but so students arrive, they are going to spend some time in a class that's sort of math science based and some time in a cla class that's English social studies based. Mm -hmm. And like I said, a lot of things are going to be sort of, um, a lot of what they're going to do is going to be projects. Mm -hmm. So last year I know they had uh, something where they were designing their own roller coaster and sort of seeing how fast it would go and calculating th that sort of thing. I know that Mr. LR mm -hmm. had students um, write songs and uh, poems that had a social justice theme, mm -hmm. sort of integrating the social studies component and the English language arts component into mm -hmm. one and allowing them to do these longer term projects. Mm -hmm. After lunch in the afternoons, the uh, Amherst College interns sort of take over. Oh. And they are the ones who run various enrichment activities for the students. Um, for instance, they, uh, they last year started uh, a design your own video game club. They started a music club and things like that. And, and by the end of the three weeks, the students will have had a lot of sort of enrichment and they also will have had will have like sort of material uh, projects that they worked on that mm -hmm. that will um, sort of be things that they can carry with them uh, from the summer into the into the next school year. Oh wow. So Nicole, I mean Noel, are you calling me yeah. Nicole and I apologize. It happens. <laughs> but do you have um, some ideas in your head that the, you and the other interns have kind of thought about for these enrichment? projects and activities? Um, we haven't gotten together to meet about it yet, but mm -hmm. I had some ideas about um, field trips maybe. Um, mm -hmm. I know the Eric Carl Museum is around here. Yes, it I've is. I've been dying to go there. So <laughs> It's a beautiful, beautiful um, building to begin with. It's mm -hmm. very um, aesthetically uh, well designed, Very uh, something that's really unexpected. And uh, there are so many programs there that um, you should really investigate because our students would really benefit from that. 
but also on the Amherst College campus, you have the Mead Art Museum, mm -hmm. and the Bineski Science Center. Yeah. So there's a lot to do right on campus. And, and then there's always Val Hall. Right. <laughs> it's always Which viral. students love. Yes. Yeah. Well, adults love it too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so what do you hope to get out of being an intern this year, Nicole? I mean, Noelle. <laughs> Here I go again. What is that? Um, well, I'm... I don't really know what I'm going to do after I graduate um, from Amherst, but I'm thinking maybe I'll go into some kind of academia teaching, and um, I want to make sure that this is something I really want to do, so I'm going to try it out for a summer and just mm -hmm. see whether or not I like it. And I'm a math major, so math is something that I'm really interested in. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that will take you through life. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> now, I know um, the Vela Summer Program um, was very fortunate in the fact that the Amherst Education Foundation uh, just last night mm -hmm. uh, announced that it was a recipient of a very large grant yes. that will keep it sustained mm -hmm. for the summer. Yep. So I know the Amherst Public Schools um, are very grateful to AEF mm -hmm. and uh, the folks who really do such a phenomenal job there raising money and awarding these grants um, to our schools. Yeah. So. Um, we want to thank them publicly, yes, and I'm, I'm thank sure you, you do thank too. You. <laughs> so I believe they're getting um, either ten or eleven thousand right. dollars to yep. run the program. So yeah. is that where the stipends come out of, and the program materials? Mm -hmm. Yep, and it's it's just wonderful because, um, this, like like I mentioned earlier, this program is is really special and I think exceptional in a lot mm -hmm. of ways, and um, they're. Um, Talking to my supervisor Joel Singley, who, mm -hmm. who I've mentioned a couple of times, who is the one who's who's really the impetus behind this program and, in fact, the Vela mm -hmm. program after school. Um, you know, he he met, uh, was talking to me about the fact that um, a large uh, portion of the reason for the education gap in the United States is not that students learn at a different rate during the school year, but it's mm -hmm. the amount that students retain over the summer, and so. Having this type of um, environment for students, both to sort of get integrated socially, especially for the students that are moving from sixth to seventh grade, mm -hmm. and in, in, into the middle school environment, but also to to, to engage academically uh, to some degree over the summer is important because these are the kinds of things that are are going to level the playing field and allow students to really achieve um, to to their potential. And so how do, how do parents and guardians get in touch with the mm -hmm. program coordinators? How do kids get to sign up? Yes. So there's a variety of ways. So um, Mr. Singley, Joel, is uh, putting together the, um, the um, brochure and the, and the uh, sign up application mm -hmm. right now. And that's going to go out to, um, to all the teachers, all the advisors in the middle school. Mm -hmm. Um, the guidance counselors, mm -hmm. it's going to go out to parents, um, and it's also going to go out to uh, all of the elementary schools. The sixth in graders. The, all, for the sixth graders. Mm -hmm. So there's a variety of ways that students can get involved, and that, that's sort of, sort of part of, 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 of it being for everyone, um, which, you know, can't be emphasized enough. This isn't, this isn't you know, uh, you fail the class, you have to go to summer school. Oh, no. this, is, this is something for for students who are the highest uh, achievers and students that haven't quite hit their stride yet. Mm -hmm. um, and it will it'll benefit everyone. Um, and we do our best to try to make sure that students that do go into the program mm -hmm. have, have a comfortable sort of social environment too. You know, mm -hmm. uh, some, some of the elementary schools are, are farther afield some, and, and, and smaller than others. And so we, we try to make sure that, that students um, have people they know, that students are, are ready to, to get in here, but in the coming weeks, all of that uh, application information mm -hmm. will go out to the, a variety of sources, okay. and, and if, if a parent uh, or, or guardian is watching this and doesn't see it, uh, I think my email is going to flash up at some point yes. on the screen, yes. maybe right about now. <laughs> um, and uh, they should feel free to contact me or my supervisor, Joel Singley. Okay. And, uh, and, um, we can get you guys hooked up. Okay. And the information will eventually be on www.arps.org. Yeah. And you can go right to the middle school page 
And then we also want to uh, let folks know that the website at Amherst College is www.amherst.edu. Yeah. And they can link to the Center for Community Engagement and I'm sure there'll be information on the Vela Scholars Program. Absolutely. Well, believe it or not, that concludes our show for today. So I want to, again, thank Noelle for joining us. And of best of luck to you this summer. Thank you. You're welcome. I know you'll be a big success. You'll be mm -hmm. the coolest intern ever. <laughs> and Dan, of course, thanks for joining us and um, telling everyone about this great Velo Scholars Program. Thank you very much. And again, thank you for tuning in to Voices from Our Schools. I'm Kimberly Stender, and I hope you have a great day. Mm -hmm.